Welcome to another Sunday WOAY ABC4 Community Forum, where we talk to community leaders and local success stories to discuss important information that affects all of us here in Southern West Virginia. I'm your host, Brandi Lawrence, and today we're joined by another distinguished guest. Molly Williams, who is the Director of Raleigh County Parks and Recreation Authority, joins us this morning. Thanks so much for coming back to the forum. Thanks for having me again. It's great to have you. Uh, I know last time we were talking about like the new park projects and things, and I know you all have a lot more going now since summer is coming real soon, coming in hot. So uh, I know sometimes there's a bit of confusion about the Raleigh County Parks and Recreation and what you all do and the Beckley uh, Parks and Recreation. So what does Raleigh County Parks and Recreation cover? So we have seven parks total, and that's Lake Stevens, which is our biggest and most popular. And then it, um, we have Fitzpatrick Park, Dry Hill Prosperity Park, um, let me make sure I don't miss any. Um, <laughs> Raleigh County 4-H Camp. We have the Stoko Community Park, Marsh Fork High School Memorial Park, and did I get them all? And last but not least is the Clear Fork Rail Trail, which is our brand new park. Awesome. awesome. And I know sometimes people do get confused mostly about the pools. So you are not New River Park pools. We are not <laughs> New River Park and we don't have any pools in any of our parks. Gotcha. Yes, all the lakes and all the parks there. So yep. you guys, gotta get that right. No pools. <laughs> All right, so what is new at the parks this year? I'm sure you all have a lot going on. So this year we've got some brand new pieces to our aqua park, and so that's the blow ups that are down in the lake. We also rearranged a little bit of what we have on the splash pad, so it might look a little different, but it's always the great fun that you remember. Awesome, awesome. And um, you all just opened the 25th, I believe? Yes, so Memorial Weekend um, on Saturday, we had our grand opening for the beach, the aqua park, and the splash pad. Um, the campground and the marina opened the beginning of May, and then our cabins and our event center have been open year round. Awesome. So you're already ready for it to go for, um, you know, a lot of summer activities and, you know, water fun. So. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, and what are some ongoing projects that you all have going? Because I've seen a couple things that you all, historical research projects and things of that nature. Yes, so with the Clear Fork Rail Trail, we wanted to make sure that there was an interpretation plan. And so that includes researching the trail and the communities around the trail. So we've worked with the National Coal Heritage Area who received a grant from the Humanities Council to um, hire a group of people to help us with that research and that plan. So if anybody that's along the Clear Fork Rail Trail has some historic information for us, we would love to talk to you about that to make sure that we have a cohesive plan and a cohesive um, history grouping that we can work with. Awesome, awesome. And are there any um, markers out there, potentially like historical markers or anything? That's what this project will That's do. what it's for. Yes. Okay, awesome. In addition to the Clear Fork Trail, we're also gathering history on all the rest of our six parks as well as our agency. So there hasn't been a lot of that done recently. So when, when I came into my position, that was definitely one thing that I really wanted to make sure that we did. So we're working with um, the Stewart's Individual Placement Program and we have AmeriCorps VISTA um, employee slash volunteer helping us with that project. So he's gathering all of the, the data and the research going back in archives to really get the full picture of what our parks used to be before they were parks as well as how did they start as parks, what did they serve as parks. Um, for example, Fitzpatrick Park started out as an African American park. So it, during segregation that was the black park and Little Beaver was the white park. So we want to really bring that story out so people know the history of that park. Awesome. Also, I was going to ask if there was any like interesting tidbits that came out of that, but that's really interesting. Like I never would have even guessed. Yes. <laughs> and, and before it was a park, there was a sawmill there. Mm -hmm. So there was a sawmill up on the hill and they used to pull the logs down and put them into the lake awesome. to float them across. Awesome. And I feel that this information will probably even give you even more ideas of like other little things to do around there, like even more events and things like that. So it should be really cool. Absolutely. One thing at Lake Stevens that we didn't know is there was two, two schools on the property that's now Lake Stevens. So we're going to really research that and hone in on that and hopefully get some markers and some information that, people, that we can share with people about those. Awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. Like um, you never really never really think about what these places used to be. You know, you've always mm -hmm. known them as a park, but you know, it's a rich history. I mean, West Virginia as a whole, but you know, these places that we come to every day, we didn't even know. Yep. So, so it's really awesome. And um, I know we got some, oh, actually last time you were here, we were talking about the three playgrounds. Yes. Um, 
So what is the progress on those projects? So we're still making progress with those projects, but unfortunately um, inflation has hit us pretty bad on the, the playground costs. So those costs have gone up, um, even though we've been making money, you know, fundraising, um, the playground cost has gone up. But we are still plugging along. We still have the three playgrounds um, that we want to do with the energy theme and the all-inclusivity, which means they're handicap accessible, but there's also features on those playgrounds for um, people with other disabilities and abilities. Awesome, awesome. And is there any way the you know the community or anyone could help donations or volunteering um, with that to sort of help these projects along? Yes, yeah, of course. Um, on our website, RaleighCountyParks.org, um, there's a link there that you can make a monetary donation. And if you would like to volunteer in person, you can also go to ParksAndRec at RaleighCounty.com, and you can email us, and we can put you in all kinds of different positions. If you're if you're really good at fundraising, we can put you in something there. If you would like to help with other events that we have. Um, such as Beach Blast and some of those ones that I hope we talk about soon. Um, we'll definitely take volunteers for that. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, if you guys are not familiar with the uh, park project, you guys go to RaleighCountyParks.org and take a look at it because it's really innovative and it's really awesome and I think the kids will really enjoy it. So if there's any way you all could help, uh, make sure you reach out to them. And um, as we were just talking about upcoming events, uh, what do you all have scheduled? I'm sure it's a jam-packed summer. Yes, it's a jam-packed summer. Um, the next event, the next one coming up is going to be the Big Boys Toy Show at Lake Stevens, and that is June 15th. And so what that is, is anything that adults would like to play with. So we've got fire trucks coming, we've got other UTVs and boats and um, all kinds of different equipment that people can come and take a look at. And it's going to be a great, it's a new event for us, so we're hoping that it's, it's a success. So come out and help us make that big boy toy show a success. Cool. And then we have our annual fireworks display and that will be July 3rd at 10 o'clock at Lake Stevens. And that is, I think it's the best fireworks show um, in the county for sure. Um, you get to watch the fireworks, but it also, you can see it reflecting off the water, which is, is unique. After that, we have our beach blast. And so that will consist of a beauty pageant on Friday and then the actual beach blast on the beach. So it'll be games, DJ, prizes, music, lots of fun on the beach on that day. And then we'll have some um, events the Sunday as well. We'll have local church come churches come in and have gospel sings and different things like that that will be entertaining on the Sunday. And then throughout the summer, we have a new program starting. Um, we're calling it Mobile Rec right now, but we're going to come up with a better, a catchier term for it. But what it is, it's going to be um, different pieces in a van or a trailer that can go from park to park. So one of the pieces that we already have is movie equipment. So that movie equipment is going to move park to park to show outdoor movies for free throughout the summer at all of our parks. And then we are working with Beckley Area Foundation. Um, we were awarded a Beckley Area Foundation grant, and so that will help us get a few more pieces, um, such as archery tag, which you can imagine is bows and arrows, but they have big rubber things on the end, nothing dangerous, <laughs> and um, a mobile gaga pit, I mean, and some other like smaller activities for younger kids. And so I'll be in that van, and so our staff will go park to park and, and pull it out, and kids can come and have fun, and then in the evenings we'll have the movies so that schedule should be coming out very soon that sounds awesome and we'll definitely you know keep an eye on that because I mean I'm sure that's something that you know everybody would love to do and it's something you can kind of follow around so Absolutely. you can catch every event that you want <laughs> to and, you know network make some friends so that sounds really awesome and um uh, let me know when you come up with that name as well. I'll be working on some things too, and I'll sing you some. Yes, yes, <laughs> please do. Turn on my marketing brain. <laughs> so, um, what are some current partner organizations that you're working with? I know you mentioned um, Beckley Area Foundation has mm -hmm. helped out with the mobile rec. Um, are there any others that are you know helping out with what you all have going on? Yeah, Parks and Rec is huge for communities. So we work with so many different partners, and we're very grateful for all those partners. Um, some of the ones we work with is the um, Beckley Raleigh County Chamber of Commerce. We also work with um, National Coal Heritage Area, like I mentioned. We work with Visit Southern West Virginia on the tourism side of things. Um, at Stoko Community Park, we lease that to Mountaineer Youth Athletics, so we work heavily with them as well as the Little Leagues, because the Little Leagues use our Fitzpatrick Fields to practice. Um, let me think, there are lots of other partner organizations that, that we work with. Um, uh, AmeriCorps Vista through Stewart's Individual Placement <clears throat> um, at Fitzpatrick. We're also home to the West Virginia softball team, West Virginia University Tech softball team. So we work with them on a number of things outside of the softball as well. Um, we work with the Girl Scouts. We work 
um, very closely with Active Southern West Virginia. They're actually doing a 5K during our Beach Blast this year, so we're very excited about that new addition to that. Um, we work with Ford Southern West Virginia, Conservation Legacy, um, WVU Tech Extension, as well as West Virginia University Extension. And um, the Marsh Fork Park um, was built by their Marsh Fork High School Alumni Association, so we work closely with them. They were gracious enough to give us that park um, when they were finished building it, so we work closely with them to keep that park up and going, um, as well as the 4-H camp board at the 4-H camp. They um, manage that park, which has um, a huge building for event spaces, but also for their camp, and they um, are also heavily involved with the school system to do outdoor classrooms out there, which is fabulous. I love that. I'm sure. I'm sure that keeps kids really engaged. Yes. Never got the chance to take a class outside, but I'm envious of all the kids. That do, <laughs> so, um, Shout out to all your partners and everybody that's doing everything to um, help out. And if there's anybody you know that was watching Community Forum and they're interested in helping, could they sign on as a partner as well? Absolutely. We do a lot of different activities and events throughout the year. We would love to partner with any other organization in the community. Um, we have lots of different events coming up in the fall as well. Um, one thing we didn't mention was the costume vault. So um, we collect costumes in the local schools and then we open the costume vault at all of our different parks throughout the fall for kids to come and get costumes. We're always looking for volunteers and other organizations to help with that. If you have a, a new event that you think that um, might take off. Um, for example, our disc golf course at Lake Stevens. Um, it was a local, excuse me, a local enthusiast, um, Ryan Shoemate, that was like, hey, we should really put a course in here. And I said, what do we need to do that? And so he designed the course and we worked with him and we were able to acquire some grants. And now we have one of the top disc golf courses in the state. That's yep. really awesome. And um, have you seen any, I know you all have like a lot, a lot going on, and I'm sure all this recreation is sort of also drawing in a lot of the tourists that are coming for the national park. Have you seen any, you know, traffic from that? We have seen an uptick in traffic. Um, and and it's kind of one of those things, we're not sure if it's the name change, the name designation change for the national park, or if it was COVID, or probably a little bit of both. But we've definitely seen an uptick in visitation. Um, but we've also been offering a lot more too. So we're excited to have locals and visitors Visitors come enjoy our parks. Awesome. It's a great way for everybody to get to know each other and get to know the area as well. And mm -hmm. awesome with your uh, historical research projects, it also gives these tourists the opportunity to learn more about the area too. So that'll be really great for them too. Yes, absolutely. All right. Awesome. And we're about a minute or so out from our first break. But before we go, do you mind plugging the contact information so everybody knows where to find you guys and they know where to donate and volunteer and potentially become a partner? Sure thing. It's RaleighCountyParks.org is our website. If you'd like to email us, it's um, ParksAndRec at RaleighCounty.com. Awesome, awesome. Oh, and you all are pretty active on your Facebook page too. Yes. So you guys, if you're on Facebook, you love social media, also check them out. And even if you're not on Facebook, um, we have our Facebook pages embedded into our website. So if you're looking to see what we are doing on Facebook and you're not a Facebook user, you can always scroll through our feed on our website too. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys, you guys stay tuned. I'll be right back here with Director Molly Williams from Raleigh County Parks and Recreation Authority to talk about everything that they have going on at their seven parks this summer. Welcome back to Sunday Community Forum. I'm here with Director Molly Williams from the Raleigh County Parks and Recreation Authority, now it's called. Um, you all officially had a name change, so what sparked that name change? So in the original uh, legislation that was passed in the 80s, it was Raleigh County Recreation Authority. And through the years, um, parks, the word parks got added into the name. So. Um, some of our documentation said Raleigh County Recreation Authority and some of our documentation said Raleigh County Parks and Recreation Authority. And so it really wasn't a big deal for the most part, but when we're applying for federal grants and working with um, bigger companies, they want your creating legislation when you're creating legislation doesn't always match your deeds or that kind of stuff. We want to make sure that everything is streamlined and everything is the same and makes things easier. So. We put through the legislation with the help from our delegates, obviously, um, to officially change the name at the state level since the state was the one that created us in the 80s to change the name to Raleigh County Parks and Recreation Authority. And so now on June 7th, we will officially on everything be Raleigh County Parks and Recreation Authority. 
So, awesome. Are you all going to have like a ceremony or anything? Uh, we'll or? probably do a little blip on our on our website and on our, our Facebook page. I don't think we'll have a big ceremony because we've got so much else going on right now. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely. And um, I did see that you all were also... Um, you know, have some job openings mm -hmm. at the Recreation Authority. So uh, what are a couple of things you all are looking for that maybe some of our people in the audience would be interested in? Yes, so we're still hiring for maintenance, um, and that's um, mostly groundskeeper. So um, mowing grass, weed eating, that kind of thing. And if it's something that somebody just wants to do for a couple hours a week, we can find them someplace to mow grass for a couple of hours a week. <laughs> we're also hiring for our event staff. So we've got lots of events coming up. We need staff to help with those. And those are a lot of evenings and weekends, but those really don't feel like work because it's a lot of fun to work our events because our events are amazing. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, is there an um, age requirement that people need to meet? Because I see that that could probably be a really awesome job for a lot of our seniors that just graduated. They're looking for some summer jobs. Yep. Yeah, so we can hire as young as 15 with a work permit. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, oh, and that will be on the website as well, applications yep. for that? Um, if you go to, there's a tab at the top, I think it's about us and there's um, how to apply. And our, there's an application right there. You can fill it out and send it back to us. You can mail it, you can email it, whatever's best. Awesome. awesome. So you guys out there, um, this seems like really cool jobs to have for the summer, especially, you know, working events and mm -hmm. probably working the beach blast is probably really, yes. really a lot of fun. <laughs> so it probably doesn't even feel like work. So you guys get in touch with them, especially if you're looking for a summer job. Um, also, you know, since it's community forum, I love to ask, um, how can the community help get involved if they can't come work specifically, mm -hmm. maybe they want to come volunteer. Um, do you have any other type of volunteer opportunities that they could probably take advantage of? Yes. Um, well, for, if you're not interested in working for our events, you can always volunteer for our events as well. Um, and there are also other different ways. Um, we do um, trash pickups. We do um, other kind of volunteer work. Active Southern West Virginia that I mentioned earlier is a volunteer organization that leads different programming. So if you're really good at a certain activity and you want to share that with others, definitely get in touch with me or Active Southern West Virginia and we can help you help others. Awesome. And um, I know that there has been a lifeguard shortage. I don't know if it, that has affected you all or not. We, we are a little different in that we don't necessarily have to have lifeguards on our swimming beach. Gotcha. Um, we can post our swimming beach as no lifeguard on duty. However, we do have to have lifeguards on our aqua park. So um, we can use a few more. I think we will get by, but we can always use a few more lifeguards. Awesome. Awesome. So any lifeguards out there, just, just stay on standby, just yep. in case. <laughs> And let's see, oh, also because this is community forum, um, a little thing that I love to do is kind of like a exercise. Um, you know, if money was no object and you know, there were, you know, you had more authority to do whatever it is that you would like to do with the authority. Um, what are some things that you would love to see implemented? I think that all seven of my parks have huge potential to grow and be bigger parks and have more amenities. Um, at Lake Stevens, we only use about a third of the entire property, and so there is a lot of land that we could expand and put in a lot more amenities. Obviously, it's cost prohibitive, but we're working to a master plan for that. The same thing with all of our parks. There's lots of other things that we could add to help our community, to help our people that we serve, but obviously money is, is, not, is an option um, that, that we struggle with. So. Um, yeah, there's lots of different things. We've talked about putting a pump track in. We've talked about putting um, more disc golf in. We've talked about putting more swimming and, and beach access at Lake Stevens. We've talked about um, adding lights to Fitzpatrick. I mean, the, with these seven parks, the what we could do with endless amount of money is endless. It really is. Um, there are so many new and inventive ways that people are using parks that we want to keep up with that trend, and we try to. So um, there are lots and lots of potential we could do. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Awesome. I like to uh, ask that question because you never know who's watching. So mm -hmm. we can kind of put it out there Then maybe we can like light a light bulb into somebody and they may yes. like, you know, take the initiative to be like, hey, I want to help see that through. Yes. So hopefully, you know, somebody out there who has the, mm -hmm. you know, the power in the pool and maybe, you know, the pockets can come help out <laughs> with that. So we can make, you know, these parks even greater for mm -hmm. our community because um, I don't know if people really get out to parks sometimes as much as they could or mm -hmm. they really understand that these are resources to help them you know get out in mm -hmm. nature and our wonderful you know nature that we have here in southern west virginia see some great things 
So uh, actually, when you kept bringing up uh, the disc golf court, another thing that I thought of was um, pickleball has really mm -hmm. made a resurgence this year, too. You are not too. the first person to ask us for that. I, you know, I figured somebody probably said something about pickleball. I see that that's making mm -hmm. like a, a big comeback. So mm -hmm. um, that might be another thing to that's, consider. Any, that's one on our list for sure. Yeah, any pickleball players out there or anybody that would love to sponsor that, I think they're ready. <laughs> so, so um, oh, also, um, I know I asked over about donations in regards to the, um, the pro uh, the playground projects, mm -hmm. but um, could you all use any donations for any of your other um, endeavors or initiatives going on? Yeah, so um, with a lot of our events, we offer prizes. So if there are local businesses that would like to offer prizes of some sort, whether it's a gift card or something that is in their store, we definitely would accept those donations um, as prizes for our different games and activities that we do. Awesome, awesome. So make sure you all get in touch with them as well. Um, let's see. One other thing that we do offer that is kind of little known, um, we have something called Neptune Radio at the Splash Pad. And so it is all licensed music, but through Neptune, we can also advertise. So if, if there are businesses out there that want to advertise on our radio station that plays every day, all day at the Splash Pad, um, this is a great opportunity for you to get your name out there. Well, that's awesome. I wasn't aware of that either. Yep. So um, that'd be really cool. Um, do you all play a specific genre of music or is it just kind of? It's, it's the Splash Pad. So so we, you know, it's a, a kid friendly <laughs> variety. Awesome, awesome. So that should be really cool as well. And um, would they need to get in touch with you via the website for that as well? Or yep. would they just yep. or give email you a call? us at parks and rec at RaleighCounty.com. Awesome, awesome. And um, do you have a specific number of sponsors that, well, sponsorships that you all are looking for? Is it kind of just open? We'll take as many as we can. Uh, yeah, we will take as many as we can. Um, Sydney at Lake Stevens really um, does a lot of that. I don't know the particulars, but she can help you get it all. And the Neptune Radio will set it all up for us with you directly. So it's not us making a radio show because that's not what we do. <laughs> definitely, definitely. You all have enough to do with these seven parks and yes. all your events that you have going on. So um, I could imagine just what's going on there. And um, what is there... But, you know, for people out there that may not be familiar with the parks or have never been to a Raleigh County mm -hmm. Park, um, what would you say to them to sort of, you know, get them out of the house and get them to come and really enjoy everything that you all have to offer? Mm -hmm. We have such a variety in all of our parks, so depending on what their interests are, if they really like water, I would definitely point them to Lake Stevens. There is fishing, there is boating, um, there are kayaks to rent. We have um, what's called an aqua bike, so it's like a bike, but it's on floats. So you pedal like you do on a bike, but it's on floats. Um, we also have the traditional pedal boats as well, and we also have stand-up paddle boards. You can rent all of those. If you just want to dip your toes in the water, definitely just come check out our beach. If you're not into that kind of water and you, you know, the lake park gives you a little bit of heebie-jeebies, which is okay, you can check out our splash pad. Um, that's chlorinated water that's treated every day, so it's, it's different than the lake water. If you have somebody that's more into, you know, maybe a casual stroll, we have lots of paved hiking trails. So at Fitzpatrick Park, there's a loop that goes the whole way around the park that's paved. There's very few inclines and declines. Um, same thing with Marsh Fork. There's a paved trail is th there as well. Dry Hill Prosperity Park has one, and it has a story walk that goes with it. So you can read a story um, on the signs as you go around the walking trail. Um, if you're looking for a little bit more high adventure, definitely try our aqua park. Um, that's, you know, you can jump off those big blow ups. You can, you know, see how fast around the, the course you can go. Um, we also have, like we mentioned, the disc golf. If you're into, if it's, if you're into softball, we've got um, several softball leagues going on. If you just want to watch, you can come and watch. If you want to play, um, you can reach out to Nathan. He's our Fitzpatrick manager. He can probably get you on a team and you can start playing. Um, if you are interested in just picnicking, we have lots of picnic shelters throughout our Parks and Rec. Um, and then if you're looking for something even different that we don't offer, we're more than happy to you know, investigate it and see how we can add that to our list of amenities at our parks. Awesome, awesome. I think one thing that has been lost in our society is a good picnic. <laughs> a good picnic, yes, it's always good for the soul. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something that I think we should do more often mm -hmm. as, you know, a society. And um, I know you mentioned the softball team, so is that um, kind of open 
starting like around the springtime or? Yep, so we have two different um, seasons. We have a summer season and a fall season. So in the summer season, we have a co-ed and church league and they meet on different nights. And then we also have tournaments throughout the summertime. If you're already on a team from somewhere else and you wanna host a tournament, you can host a tournament, you can rent our fields or you can come to one of our tournaments that we host. And then we also have a fall league, which is, um, I believe it's co-ed and men's, um, or it might be church and men's. You'll have to ask Nathan about that. Um, but we definitely have lots of opportunities to come and play. Awesome. And it's kind of um, open to well, mostly adults, I'm sure. Yes, but we have what's called quick ball, which is going to be part of our mobile rec unit. So it's it's a form of a ball game. It has a little foam ball and a, and a little different bat. And so it's, it's literally quick ball. So just <laughs> a quick game, if mm -hmm. that's all you're looking for. Um, check out our mobile rec schedule and hopefully we'll have one near you. Awesome, awesome. I can't wait for that mobile rec mm -hmm. uh, thing. I think that's really awesome. And I, I, don't th I don't think I've ever heard of anything like that before. So that should be really cool. And I think a lot of people will enjoy it. I think so too. Awesome, awesome. And um, we're about a minute or so out before we end the show. But before we go, just one more time, can you plug the contact information so everybody can keep up with all the awesome stuff you are doing? Of course. It's RaleighCountyParks.org is our website. We also have um, several Facebook pages. We've got Lake Stevens Facebook page and a Raleigh County Parks and Recreation Facebook page, a Fitzpatrick Facebook page. Um, and also, if you just want to reach out to us, our email is ParksAndRec at RaleighCounty.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming back to the forum and giving us all this awesome information. Um, I think we all learned a lot <laughs> today about uh, the parks um, and everything that you all have going. So we'll definitely keep up with what's going on. I'm sure you all will keep up with what's going on too, because I mean, all this looks super fun. So um, thanks guys for joining us this Sunday. Be sure to tune in next Sunday where we speak to more community leaders and local success stories about important things happening here in Southern West Virginia. You guys have a happy Sunday and a awesome week.